Hey everybody! Well, friends, mostly. How's it going? Now, this is going to be another battle video, sort of. But it won't be, well, it will be me fighting, but it won't be me fighting against other people. I'm gonna do something very unique in this video. I'm going to edit some stuff! Oh my god! I know, right? But hey, this is the first time for everything. I will probably mess it up. If I do, I beg your forgiveness. Anyway, since seeing that this is going to be the game where I will be focusing on for the foreseeable future, because there's so there's there's so much stuff for this game already, and there's even more coming up for the next couple of years at, at least. So it would be a good idea if I explain these to my friends that don't know what this whole deal is about. I mean, RG, Leo, you guys probably know what what. What, what's up with everything? What's the deal with everything here? But I realize that some of you don't. George, I'm looking at you, for instance. Well, I'm not looking at you, but you know what I mean. So I'm here to explain stiff, uh, to stiff stuff. Basically, I will explain what does everything have, uh, the factions, their strengths, their weaknesses mostly, units, blah blah blah, and I will see if I will be able to splice in gameplay footage from the back so you won't be just staring at a custom battle screen for how many minutes, I have no idea how long this is going to take, but here we go! So, first of all, let's take a look at stats. Now, how does this game break down stats? You have armor. Note. I am still a noob, so I have no idea how much is the status quo. I have well, I pretty much I have a fair, I have a pretty good guess that this is no armor at all. But for instance, is this high leadership? Is this good weapon strength for a lord? I have no idea. But hey, let me tell you about it. armor. I don't have to explain that, do I? It's, <laughs> it's how much armor something has. Leadership, basically, a guy's resolve and when this thing hits zero, you can see it on the battle, this thing goes down as the battle wears on, as he's charged from the flank, this, by the way, let's just select a good, for example, the best of course, there we go, 100 armor, it's pretty cool, it actually says how resistant it is to missile fire and melee attacks, leadership, when this thing reaches zero, they basically run away, because they are afraid, as long as you keep this high, your unit will stay in fight, speed, self-explanatory, Melee attack is how often their attacks will hit. Melee defense is how often the enemy will miss this thing. So higher melee defense is a very resilient unit in one way or another. For instance, let's pick something with spears. Shields, sorry. So the gore herd. There you see easy and has shields. This thing has a 35% chance to deflect, which is not very good, honestly. But anyway. Yeah, the higher this is, the more resilient your unit is, and this, and this goes together with armor. And the higher this is, the more offensive your unit is. Weapon strength is, assuming you do hit, how much damage will you do? And it breaks these down to weapon damage and armor piercing damage. And charge, well, this, I, I believe this gets added to the melee attack when you charge, and then it goes away. So... And the missiles, hang on, let me get some stuff. Where are missiles? There we go. And missiles, we have ammunition, how many shots. So each guy, well, beast man, has 22 arrows in his quiver. The range is 115, which I believe is shit. <laughs> and the missile damage, same as this, as weapon strength, but in ranged. And down here, there are... Abilities, for example, Vanguard Deployment, Stalk, and Primal Fury, which, as you can see here, it says it's an augment for themselves. All Beastmen have this. It is disabled if they are shitting themselves from fear when their leadership is below 50%. But if it is above, they get these buffs. So anyway, now that we've done this, what is this faction? Obviously, it's the Beastmen. What are they good at? They're rushy. They're not meant to defend anything. They need to attack. They want to attack. They have a lot of units that just come at you from all, from all, from everywhere. Well, not these guys, but these guys do. <laughs> but the beastmen do have 
well, they're, they're a very aggressive faction. Light armor all around, with the exception of the gores with these things. High attack, chopper chopper, all the good stuff. They're very, very quick on their feet, too. Look at that. This, this, these guys are speed demons. And they also have amazing monsters, mostly. For example, the Minotaurs. Something very, very cool. No doubt I will be editing. Anyways, we will see. Together with the Beastmen, the Warrior, the Warher, the Warherd of the Shadow Gave. It's basically the same roster, but it's just the different color. So that's why it's there. Next faction. There's a lot of factions here. Most of these are sub factions that don't do anything, they're just recolors. So we will just go through the main factions. Hold well, on, and we're on. Wood Elves. <clears throat> the Wood Elves are the same. Aggressive, but under good, not in the same way as the Beastmen. They can beat your face in the dirt. Bitch. Beat your face in the dirt. Talk properly. But they do it in a different way. <clears throat> Their melee is pretty good. They have these crazy women. The war dancers with dual swords who slice you in half. They have the wild rangers. Their infantry is very disciplined. Good leadership. Crappy armor. They're glass cannons. And they have amazing missiles. They're elves. Well, they're wood elves. And they also have trees. What is not to like? They can ride reindeers, they can ride horses, they can ride anything, but the Wood Elves are this glass cannon skirmishy faction of this game. Of course, both the Beastmen and the Wood Elves, and a lot of the factions I will go through later, can do a lot of stuff. Well, uh, multiple strategies, but the main strategy is that. Next up, uh, let's go from this one. Let's go. Bretonia. Arthurian legend, knighthood, and filthy, filthy peasants. That's what the Bretonia is all about. They have probably the best assortment of cavalry in the old world. Most of them are shock cavalry, but they do have some amazing melee cav. And they are also really good in the sky, because they have stuff like Pegasus Knights, which are amazing. Their infantry is meh. Well, they're peasants, of course they're meh, but you can buff them in a number of ways where they can be surprisingly difficult to kill. But most of the time, the most of most of the work in this army will be done by the cavalry. Next, my favorite, the Dawi. I mean dwarves. I mean they're the same. Dwarves, their thing is that they are very, very, very highly armored and very resilient. I mean, look at that. The base dwarf warrior has 85 armor. And as you saw earlier, the elite bestigore herd in the war in the beastmen had 100. That's only 15 more. And they cost a lot more. And high leadership, high melee defense, they will hold the line against a lot a lot of stuff. Dwarves are very resilient, very hard to kill. They have amazing infantry, but their infantry excels in long attrition battles with other infantry, which means they have to stay in to do the damage. They will not just burst the, the enemy down like Beastmen do, for instance, or Chaos some of the time. They have very good missile infantry. Boilers, Thunders very good. Iron Drakes with flamethrowers, who doesn't like that? Iron Drakes with troll hammer torpedoes, blah blah blah. And they have very very good artillery. Ballistas, catapults, but they're called the grudge throwers, cannons, organ guns that are basically four cannons stuck together. Of course, that's not how it actually is, but you know, I'm just I'm just pulling things down to basic things. And they have helicopters, because of course they do. They lack in cavalry, but they make up for it. They can use their helicopter, their gyrocopters as they're called, to basically act as cavalry, sort of. Not really how, not really the same, but whatever. What can you do? The Clan Angrant sub faction actually has something different. They have ethereal heroes. 
that actually have physical resistance because they're ghosts, which is pretty cool. All dwarves have magic resistance because that's the way things are in the Warhammer world. Next up is the green skins, the orcs. Rushy. That's their main thing. They're ta they're, the whole thing about them is to attack. Attack. And oh yeah, attack. And attack once more. They are a very aggressive faction, as you would expect from Greenskins. And they have very, very good infantry, as you would expect from Greenskins. Pretty decent archers, as far as I know, and pretty decent cavalry. They're pretty decent in everything. But their forte is that they will swamp you with numbers and with and with their very good quality of infantry. That's their thing. Their weakness. They tend to run away a lot. I mean a lot. They have pretty low leadership all around. So yeah, that's not very fun. Needless to say, the basically the poster boy of Warhammer. The poster boy faction of Warhammer, the Empire. Is it a poster boy? Well, it does have the po the guy literally on the poster, so I guess that works. The Empire is the jack of all trades faction, not master of none. They have their strength. Their weaknesses are that their infantry is not bad, but it's not good. It's average. It's whatever. You can buff it to be very effective, but it's whatever, it's, it's fine, it's good, it's good infantry. Their missiles are very good, hand gunners, I'm pretty sure that hand gunners are excellent armor piercing guys, crossbows are pretty good. They're, they have some of the most dangerous cavalry in the old world, as far as I'm concerned, the Demigriff Knights. And their artillery is not too shabby either. The mass, the the Death Star Ray here in the Luminar is pretty fun. Steam tanks are always cool to see. They have a massive, massive selection of magic. They have one, two, three, four, five, six lords of magic to choose from. Technically, they should have eight, but they have six in the hero slot, plus one more in the lord slot with Balthazar, Lord of Metal. And heroes, you have Shadow, Beasts, Life, Light, Heavens, and Fire. But yeah, if you want something that the enemy will look at it and be like, I have no idea what this guy is going to bring, pick the Empire. That's what I'm going to do at some point. The Vampire Counts, the undead of the bunch. They're led by, vampire, by vampires, in case you didn't realize from the name, and they have undead skeletons as their minions, which is awesome. And ghosts. They are even rushier than the Greenskins. I mean, the Greenskins can, if they want to sit back and shoot at you with artillery and doom diver catapults and they have archers and all that. Not sure why you would want to do that, but you can. The vampires don't have that option because they have literally no missiles. That's a negative. What's interesting about these guys is that they also don't do not rout. I mean obviously skeletons will not be afraid and run away for their lives because they're dead. They don't care. What they do have is a little mechanic called crumbling. When their leadership goes down, which is shit, as you can see, they start to take extra damage. And in the end, they will just die. So, that's the whole thing. Everything has this, even the vampires at the top. And their heroes tend to be... In this game, usually, something that casts spells and is a magic user tends to be bad at close combat. There are some exceptions, of course, and most of those exceptions are here in the Vampire Count's roster. The Vampire Lord, Spellcaster, in the lore of vampires, but he's not too bad in melee either. Vlad von Karstein, Manfred, the Strigoi Ghoul King, all of these guys, they're pretty good at beating the crap out of everything. They have amazing monsters. Crypt Horrors are pretty good, Vargolfs, Terrorgeists, of course, and they have the best cavalry unit in the old world, the Blood Knights. Pretty much, they can destroy anything, any other cavalry unit one-on-one, -on -one. any other cavalry, because they're vampires on undead horses. They can be dangerous. And lastly, the Warriors of Chaos. The, oh, yeah, and there's Norska too. 
but I have no idea what Norsk is about, but hey, I'll try and figure it out eventually. So these guys have... Their infantry is like dwarf infantry, incredibly resilient and nearly impossible to kill. But they are way, way, way rushier than dwarves. I mean, the only similarity between these guys and the dwarves is that they have a lot of armor. That's about it. And that their infantry tends to be expensive. These guys! Like, holy shit. Chaos infantry is the is a very, very dangerous, very dangerous, especially chosen and all that. But in, they don't just rely on their infantry. They do have Chaos Marauders, Spiring Champions, these demon-possessed chosen that became just crappy, Forsaken, and then you have the Chaos Warriors, the Chosen. And then you have these folks, Cavalry. Chaos Knights are very good as, as far as I know, but they are stupid expensive. They also have some Marauder Horsemen, which I almost never like using, in the campaigns anyway. I don't know about multiplayer yet. Very good monsters, and they have a wicked, wicked artillery piece, which is basically a demon bound inside a cannon, which spews out tormented souls to the enemy. I mean, what more could you possibly want from that, huh? <laughs> they have very good monsters, as I said, Chaos Giants, Chaos Spawns, Dragon Ogres, etc, etc. That's the factions. And Norska, right. I have no idea. I mean... Me we were talking about it today with... We're not... We were talking about it today, and some... People say they're OP, others say they're not. I mean, I don't know, but as far as I'm concerned, these guys chaos aligned and they just have okay infantry, okay to good that can receive buffs, some excellent monsters, war mammoths, Norskin giants, frost worms, and all that. But are they good? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. All I know is Wolfric is incredible. <laughs> Any other, all of these other factions, the formed Karstein faction, are basically copy paste of the Vampire Counts roster. They just have a different color. The two exceptions to this rule that are Clan Angrund, which I talked about, and Middenland to the Empire. Middenland, they removed a lot of their units because they wanted to keep up the theme of we do not worship, worship Sigmar. So they removed all of the religious units, such as the Flagellants and the Warrior Priest. But hey, if you want to play Blue Empire, there they are. So, that's the factions of this game. Basically, I did this video so that you can keep a... So, at least you have some fair idea of what's going on. You might... You very well might forget everything I just said, but hey, why not? I just did it. So, there you go. Have fun. And I hope that you enjoyed the editing that at the time of recording I haven't done yet, obviously. And I hope I don't screw it up. <laughs> See you later, folks.